Good morning and welcome to worship. It is wonderful to be with all of you. Uh, thank you to those that are joining us for worship in the sanctuary. And I want to say welcome also to those that are joining with us online as well. And I want to say a special welcome to anyone who may be joining us for the first time today. If you've not received a copy of our bulletin and would like to have our order of worship and our announcements on our prayer list, please send us an email at hopewellumcgroveport at gmail.com. And now I want to invite you to join in singing with us the chorus of 10,000 reasons. Indeed, on this Independence Day, we have 10,000 reasons or more to praise the Lord. Let us join our voices together. And I invite you to stand as you're able, wherever you may be. call to worship I look up towards the mountains where can I find help my help comes from Yah Yahweh Yahweh. Yahweh the maker of heaven and earth he will not let you fall your guardian will not fall asleep indeed the guardians of Israel never rest or sleeps Yahweh is your guardian Yahweh is the shade over your right hand. The sun may beat down on you during the day, nor will the moon at night. Yahweh is the day of every evil. He guards you your life. Yahweh guards you. You come and go now and forever. Let us join in singing America the Beautiful. in the opening prayer. Almighty God, 
You rule all the peoples of the earth. Inspire the minds of all persons to whom you have committed the responsibility of government and leadership in the nations of the world. Give to them the vision of truth and justice that by their counsel all nations and peoples may work together. Give to the people of our country zeal for justice and strength of forbearance that we may lose our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Forgive our shortcomings as a nation. Have mercy on us. Purify our hearts to see and love the truth. We pray all these things through Jesus Christ. Amen. say good morning to all the children that are with us today. I'm wondering how many of you have been to a 4th of July parade already? Have you? I haven't. I shouldn't raise my hand. I love 4th of July parades. What's your favorite part of the parade? The floats. The floats. Being in it. Being in it? I love all those things, but from the time I was like this tall, maybe it's because I love sugar. I loved the candy at the parade. Come on, who looks forward to the candy at the parade? A few people? Oh yeah, the candy at the parade. My neighborhood always has a big parade, unfortunately not this year because of COVID, but there's always lots of candy at the parade. And from the time I was pretty little, I learned a few things about getting candy at the parade. Is it, can you, do you get much candy if you're looking the opposite direction? No. How do you get the most candy? Do you know? Looking forward? Looking forward? Yes, looking at those that are, are giving out the candy, right? Especially if you can look someone in the eye with a beautiful smile. You're likely to maybe have them throw candy to you, right? We're there at the parade, love the candy. And I'm reminded of this as I think about the psalms that we've read for the call to worship and the psalm that we're going to be um, reading later on in the service. And the psalms remind us to look to God and that the God is the source of our protection, that God is there for help all the time. And as I think about getting candy and how important it is to keep our eyes on those that are throwing the candy at the parade, it's also so much even more important to keep our eyes on God so that we can see all the many ways in which God blesses us and provides for us. Would you guys like some candy? I won't even throw it at you. (coughs) You want more? Let us pray. Will you repeat after me? Dear God, God, thank you you. for always being present. present. Help us us. to keep our sight sight. and our ears ears. on you. you. Amen. Thank you. Let us sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
a beautiful prayer. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. As we come to this time of, of uh, community prayer, I want to draw your attention to the prayer requests that are listed in our announcements this week. And if you have a prayer that you'd like to share with us, please send us an email at hopewellumcgroveport at gmail.com. And if you have a joy or concern that you would just like to share with me as your pastor, uh, please send me a text, give me a call, or email me at pastorwendyhs at gmail.com. I'm wondering if there are joys and concerns that you bring today that are not listed in the bulletin that you would like lifted up. Gail yes. And I, Gail and I are celebrating 51 years of, of trying to get along together. 51 years of marriage and trying to get along with one another. Praise God. Thank you for sharing that joy with us and that miracle maybe. 51 years is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for that update. We'll keep praying and praise God for a match there. May that work out well. Are there other joys or concerns that you lift up this day? Pray for strength for Chad to, to continue to be strong enough to potentially get a liver transplant, yes, and let him to have the care he needs in the meantime. I, pray, I ask for prayers for my friend Otis, who has um, brain cancer. Keep him in your prayers, and um, I lift up to you an unnamed person who is struggling with an abusive relationship, um, and prayers for, for peace for them as well. Let us pray. Dear God, on this Independence Day, we have so much for which to be thankful. Lord, we thank you for this country, this land was filled with many riches, a land in which we have many liberties, including the ability to freely worship you as we choose. Lord, we remember those that gave their lives so that we can have the liberties that we enjoy. On this day, as we celebrate independence, we remember our dependence on you, O oh Lord. All that we have comes from you. Lord, we ask your blessing upon our country, blessing upon the leadership, and Lord, may we be a blessing to all the world. And Lord, as we have so much to celebrate, we also come with heavy hearts. We have on our minds and on our hearts the names of persons that are listed in our bulletin and those that we have just spoken, as well as those that are unspoken, persons and situations for which we ask for your mercy. We ask for healing mercy. We ask for strength. We ask for peace, for wisdom, for guidance. Lord, we give thanks that you are present in these situations as well. And Lord, on this day of independence, we remember our dependence on you. We also remember those that are not yet free. Lord, we ask that you be with us and help us to work for freedom for all people. Dear Lord, we give thanks that you are here guiding us and guiding your church. Lord, we just ask for your safety too of all those that are gathered this weekend for celebrations, that, that they may be ones that are filled with joy, ones that glorify your name. 
ones that lift you up. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now we are going to have our psalm reading. Taze is going to come up, and you may notice here that this is a responsive reading. The psalms many times were spoken in this way. Um, they were said as maybe one person would say a line, and then the community would gather together and say the other lines. And so in that same spirit, we're going to do that today. I raise my eyes to you, you who rule heaven, just as the eyes of the servant attend their master's hand, just as the eyes of the female servants attend to their mistress's hand, until we attend to the Lord God, until he has mercy on us. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy, because we are more than of shame. We have had more than enough mockery and self-confidence there's enough shame from the proud. This is the word for all of God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we come with our hearts open, eager to receive a message from you. Amen. I want to thank you for submitting questions that you've had and also to let you know that it's not too late, that if you have some questions about a, a scripture or why we do something in church, a theological question, any of those sorts of things, please let me know and I will use those as I shape uh, our sermons for July and August and um, also answer questions through other communications and plan for small groups for the fall. One of the questions I received was, I thought was a little bit of a softball question, and I thought, well, a holiday weekend is a great time for a softball question. Um, and that, that um, question was, what is my favorite scripture? Although it was a bit of a hard um, question, it was, what was my favorite scripture and why? Um, it was, it was a hard one because there are so many good scriptures. Um, I also got questions about things like how the Old Testament and the New Testament are connected together. Um, and so I actually could not just pick one scripture, so I thought I'll pick a psalm. And starting today with favorite psalm, and I actually have two. Um, and um, then we will talk about um, a favorite uh, passage from the New Testament next week and the week after a favorite passage um, from the Old Testament. Gotta make sure I got that in the right order there. Um, but lots of, lots of great things coming forward through the questions that you have asked. And kind of my, my all-time favorite psalm is the one that uh, we did for our call to worship. Um, I look up towards the mountains, or I look up towards the hills from which come my help. Um, and my newest favorite psalm is the one that was just we just read, Psalm 123. I raise my eyes to you who rule heaven. Um, and, and so I want to talk about the psalms today and, and what I've learned from, from the psalms and hope that there is something that you all will take and learn from that as well. And I would like to invite you to tell me your favorite psalm. So please share that with me. I do look forward to hearing that. I've also, I know that at least one person likes Psalm 121, like me. So um, I, I like the psalms in that the psalms, you have this wonderful mixing of lament. So being able to acknowledge our sadness, those burdens that we share, those things for which we need help. And this wonderful celebration and joy and remembering that joy and also a, a, a hope is always in the psalms. This everlasting hope, these things that we can count on from God. And I love how those things are mixed together in the Psalms. And I think that's an important for us because it, there's times when I know I, and probably some of you too can relate to this, you're kind of maybe focused more on the joy and how everything is great. And then these sorrows come, you're not sure what to do with them. Or maybe there's this sorrow here and it just kind of is overwhelming and it's hard to see the joy. See, joy is not meant to be the icing on the cake, it's the cake of life. 
And in many ways, sorrow is a part of the cake of life too. And so is hope. And so bringing those things together, I see that in the Psalms, and that's why I I love that reminder from the Psalms. I also love these Psalms, particularly on this day of independence, because it reminds me of our dependence upon God. Our help comes from God. Our eyes are to be lifted up. And I need that reminder to lift my eyes up sometimes because if I'm looking down, it's okay to look down in prayer and stuff. But if I look down too much or even just look in too much, I miss all that's around me. And the beauty of the Lord is all around us. The sun is shining today. The weather is beautiful outside. And there's so much beauty within this space as well. I look out and I see so many beautiful faces here and I I see the diversity that's in this room and in the world and God's creation is amazing. And so sometimes I just need that reminder to look up, to look up, to look around, that the signs of God are all around us. I especially like the reminder to look to the mountains because I spent um, my summers during college working for the Appalachia Service Project in Central Appalachia. And I, my faith grew and I grew as a person so much during my time in the mountains. And as we were driving around going to work site, we'd have volunteers that would come from youth groups from around the country and spend a week with us doing emergency home repairs. And we would drive around visiting the sites, providing some supervision, delivering supplies. And we would drive around in pickup trucks and vans, many of them that had been donated by churches, which was great. We got the donations from the churches, but these were vehicles that many of them, were, this was their last, their last stop in, in life before they went to the junkyard, okay? There were times when you were shifting that manual shift and it just wasn't going in reverse and you were on a blind curve and you were hoping and praying that it was going to be all right. And it always was. God was there with us. There was a great reminder of that. So I take that from the Psalms. Also, the Psalms remind me how important it is to look at context and how important it is to take the Bible seriously, but not too literally. And I want to explain that. Because I think about Psalm 121 and the words that he will not let you fall, or sometimes it describes he'll not let your foot slip. Okay, I wasn't even this tall before I had fallen a gazillion times. And I'm not just talking you fall down and scrape your knees. I had many visits to the emergency room. When I interviewed my first babysitter for Amma, I said, you do know how to get to the ER, right? (laughs) Because I just expected it. Apples don't fall far from the tree. I just expected to need to go and was pleasantly surprised that it took years to even get to the urgent care. Um, So I, I can't take it too literally in that way. But I know that God is there for assurance. And I can think about many times when my life, when God has shown me that assurance. And yes, I have fallen many times. But God has always been there in the fall, and God has always been there to help me up. And that's the kind of assurance I take as the seriousness of this psalm. This psalm, there's the beautiful things that we learn about God from these psalms. The guardian of Israel, Yahweh, never rests or sleeps. A great reminder that God is there with us all the time. God is on duty 24-7, 365 or 366 days a year. God is always there. We can count on God. God will guide us and protect us. These psalms were written by people that were on a pilgrimage. They were on a journey to Jerusalem. 
This was not an easy journey. It was not always a safe journey. At night, they would have people that were guarding their camps. They also had this wonderful reminder they could sleep rest assured that God was there with them as well. And the reminders of the sun not beating them down is that they would not be killed by the sun, even though sometimes they got sunburned. And at that time, they also were concerned about moonstroke. And that they thought that the dominion of the, the sun and the moon was an agent for evil. They had different understandings that we did. And so that's where that comes in, that God will protect you from evil. God will protect you from whatever might come from the sun or the moon. God is still there protecting us. It doesn't mean that we are not the victims of evil. We know that happens in our world. To say it doesn't would be to, not, to deny the truth that is around us. But even in that, that God is with us there. God protects us and guides us and guards us now and forever. And in the Psalm 123, keep your eyes on the master. This sometimes the Psalms and other scriptures have been used to justify slavery. That's not the intent here. The intent is to use a description that people would know and understand to describe the relationship with God. And at many times in our history, slavery was not the same, the history of the world, as it was in the United States. To keep your eyes on the master's hand that's to know the master's move, to know what direction they're going, to see how to perform a task, and, and to receive from the master food, clothing, and necessities. See, we receive from God all that we need, and we receive mercy from God as well. See, God is a master that is merciful, not a master that is abusive. God is a master that gives us our freedom, our freedom to choose, our freedom to align ourselves with God or not. May we all choose this day to align with God, the God who provides for us and gives us mercy. As I have been thinking about this holiday. I have been thinking about the many times in which we say, God bless America. God bless you. But mercy, mercy. What if we said, God have mercy on you? Imagine if our politicians, instead of saying, God bless America, said, God have mercy on America. How many of them would get elected? <laughs> Nobody. But see, mercy is spoken of in the Bible more times than blessing is. Mercy is, given, is shown throughout the Old and the New Testament. Mercy is a blessing. Mercy that comes from God is throughout the test, Old and New Testament. It's divine. It's a part of the divine nature of God to give us mercy. And as I've thought about this for myself, I think about how my posture is a little bit different in asking for mercy than asking for a blessing. Because sometimes in asking for a blessing, it's easy to become expectant that the blessing should come to us. Mercy comes from a place for me, a more of a place of humility. God have mercy on me. I know I don't deserve it. If I were truly to be judged by God for all of what I have done, the outcome would be different than what it is today. <laughs> Surely I have received mercy and blessings that I did not deserve. If I were to take a score, and you might want to try this, take a score of those things for which you need mercy for, 
and make a list of all those things in ways in which you have been provided for and blessed and the things you've been given. The things and ways in which God has guided you, protected you, cared for you, given you what you needed. There's many more ways in which God gives for us. And we need God's mercy. And I wonder how it might look different for the church. If we pray, Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. May we be quick to show mercy and slow to pass judgment. Leave the judgment to God. Quick to share the grace of God and slow to talk about the wrath of God. For many times the church has come with what we stand against as opposed to what we stand for. What if we ask for mercy from God God, have mercy on us. Have mercy on the church. Show us your way. Show us your way. The Lord is continuing to shine a light for us, giving us a pathway forward. There is hope for each and every one of us. There is hope for the church, and there continues to be hope for this great nation that we are a part of. Yes, there are those things for which we ought to lament. On this 4th of July Independence Day, I remember that it took 89 more years before African American slaves re received liberty in the United States. Liberty and justice for all was not liberty and justice for all for quite some time. And even this day, there are those that are incarcerated that I remember that do not have liberty. I don't say that to say that people, that we shouldn't have a means of uh, taking care of accountability for crimes that have been committed, but just to lift up and to remember those that are incarcerated as well to remember those that gave their lives. This is a day of celebration for so many, but it's also a reminder of those who lost their lives fighting for our country. It's a day in which we can celebrate and have joy, a day in which, like the psalmist, we can hold tight those things for which we lament, and that we can have hope that God is there in the midst of all of us, Friends, God meets us in our joy and celebrates with us. And God is also there offering compassion to us in our times of need. May we continue to follow this great God. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Let us join together. Let us break bread together.
again, thank you for that beautiful gift of your voices. As we come to this time of communion, I want to invite you to have your communion elements. And if you're uh, worshiping with us online, have a, a piece of bread or a cracker and a cup of juice. Is there anyone here in the sanctuary who, doesn't, who needs communion elements? Marla does. So John will be with you in just a moment. As uh, he is bringing that to Marla, I want to remind us all that Jesus is the one who hosts the communion table. This act and this offering of mercy that Jesus gives to us is one that is offered to all of us. All are welcome at the table. All are worthy of partaking in holy communion. You don't need to be a member of this church or any church to participate in communion. Jesus invites to the table all who seek mercy, desire to know him, to receive his love, and to seek to live in peace with one another. And the best way to, to approach the communion is to begin with a time of confession. So let us join together in our confession today. Merciful God, we confess that we have failed to love you with our whole heart. We have failed to fully be your church in this time and place. Our actions and inactions have not always reflected your image to our neighbors and one another. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us so that we may have full, abundant life. That proves God's gracious love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, merciful God, creator of heaven and earth, ruler of all nations, judge of all creation. You formed us in your image, breathe into us the breath of life, and offer to us this land rich with resources to meet our needs. You set before our forefathers and mothers the opportunity to build a nation glorifying you, reflecting your love, your peace, your justice, and your mercy. When we strayed and went our own way, O oh Lord, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from slavery to sin, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and continue to speak to us this day, inviting us to embody your love and share your vision of heaven here on earth. With joy and thanksgiving, we join your people on earth and all the company of heaven, praising your name and joining their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ who healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Your Spirit anointed Jesus, and your same Spirit sends us into the world to preach the good news to the poor, release of prisoners, sight for the blind, freedom for those who are oppressed, and to announce that you will save your people. In remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
Let us pray and let us take our communion elements in our hands so we can, they can be blessed. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, O Lord, and on these gifts of bread and wine that we hold in our hands. May Christ and his mercy known to us through this bread and cup strengthen our kinship that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood, one with Christ united in mission, poured out into the world to embody Jesus in fullness to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And with confidence and joy-filled hearts, we join together praying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen On the night before Jesus was arrested and taken into custody and sentenced to death by the authorities of his own country, Jesus met with his disciples and had dinner with them. And they, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks to God and he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body that is given for you. Let us eat. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, the common cup that was on the table, and he gave thanks to God, and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us drink and remember. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks for this holy sustenance you have offered to us. You have filled us with your spirit and prepared us to go forth into the world, sharing the good news of Jesus' transformative love, grace, and mercy. Thank you. Amen. Let us sing together for the beauty of the earth.
Amen. It's so good to hear you all singing today. I love it. Um, I want to draw your attention to the many announcements that are in the bulletin. There are many ways for us to uh, share acts of mercy in the community through the distribution of food and supply, other supplies that are needed. Ways for us to share this good news of Jesus uh, through our digital ministry through our ministry with the children and youth in the church and in the community. I especially want to make sure that you know that we will be having vacation Bible school. It's going to look a little different this year, um, but we are excited that we will be offering vacation Bible school, and that uh, will be July 18th and 19th, although it says the 19th and the 20th in the bulletin. Let me clarify that. Uh, <laughs> pardon me? I believe it, 18th and the 19th, Sunday and Monday. So if we can make that correction, the 18th and the 19th at six o'clock. And I want to uh, uh, thank, thank Carla Cup for taking the leadership on that and also let you know that she is looking for helpers. So if you are interested in helping with Vacation Bible School, uh, please let Carla know and please share this ministry with others in the community. We would love for this to be an opportunity for us to share the good news of Jesus with as many children as we can. As you go forth from here, wait, before we do that, I forgot, Kim has a video for us for the 4th of July. One nation under God. A nation forged on the sacrifice of pilgrims, pioneers, and patriots. Men and women who trusted God, who knew creation had much to offer, and who believed in something bigger than themselves. A nation grown strong through the vision of inventors, idealists, and innovators. We've given humanity wings, even sent them to the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've done the impossible and haven't been afraid to roll up our sleeves and do the hard work. Ask not! What your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And above all, we thank God for our Christian foundation, the strength of our nation, and the many blessings He has bestowed upon our sweet land of liberty. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. God bless. America. Thank you, Kim, for sharing that video with us. Kim does a wonderful job with our digital ministry. Praise God for her work. Yes. The slides, all of the graphics that are there, Kim selects those things every week. There's a lot of hours of work that's put into that, and they're beautiful. And they add to the beauty, God's beauty, that we can see in this place. So praise God for you and your ministry, Kim. As we go forth from here, may our words be ones that share God's love and God's mercy. May our hands reach out to others in need, offering assistance. May our feet walk towards those in need as well. And remember this, for some in this world, love is a stranger. May they find in us to be the most generous of friends. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let us sing, go now in peace.